All right, welcome to three and out. Illinois drops their second game in a row, 31-24 for the Boilermakers. Ben, like, what's your quick reaction? Like, what went wrong for Illinois today? I think what went wrong is the focus for everybody, the coaching staff, the players. I mean, the penalties are, just came at really bad times, and, and it was a lot of them and bad choices, throwing the ball and bad play call, just focus all around. Yeah, you know, one thing is Michigan State and Purdue, maybe not good matchups. You know, Payton, Thorne, and Michigan State, you know, did a great job with screen passes to get away from the defensive pass rush. For Purdue, like, they are an arid offense that likes to get the ball out quick. Brett Bielema talked about, you know, they have one of the fastest releases in the Big Ten. So if Illinois can't get pressure on the quarterback, it seems like the secondary kind of gets exposed at times. They were exposed. I think 17 interceptions so far this season, and I think that uh, hid most of the problems in the secondary coverage-wise, and that was exposed today. They got the interception early, and they looked, things looked fine, and then all of a sudden the secondary starts getting burned, and it, Purdue put up a lot of points. Yeah, Witherspoon played a good game, but Quan Martin, you know, struggled at times. Quan Martin dropped two interceptions that he should have had, and he got burned for two touchdowns also. It was just a poor game, and they found out who they wanted to target. They did the preparation. They were prepared. They did their work. They did their research, and I think they did it better than Illinois did. You know, offensively, Chase Brown didn't get 100 yards for the first time, but he did score two touchdowns. But overall, this offense just seems like it's missing something, and Barry Lenny just got extended. I think there's some serious questions about the offense. It gets more predictable every week. Uh, just looking at it, sitting up there, I think you, you know what's coming. You can expect it. it. Before the half, three minutes left and two runs up the middle with Reggie Love. I mean, I think that says it all. That's all you need to watch for this game to, to see how you should think about this offense. Yeah. And technically, Illinois still controls its destiny to Indianapolis, but they're going to have to beat Michigan next week. And... You know, after the past couple of weeks, I'm not sure they will be able to score against the Wolverines. I totally agree with that. It's going to be hard to put up points. It's going to be hard to stop them. I've seen nothing that says otherwise, and I think it could be a, a, a 40 to something game next week after today. You know, but before the season, like if you said, hey, if Illinois finished eight and four, made the Music City Bowl, people would say that was a success. I feel like Illinois is a victim of their own success in October and September. You know, what's kind of like your bowl projection for Illinois, and do you still have a positive outlook on the season? I think you have to have a positive outlook at the season. I mean, you would have taken seven or eight wins at the beginning of the season, no question. I don't think there's any reason for that to change now, even if it's a somewhat of a collapse. But I think you're still looking at the Music City Bowl or maybe even the Pinstripe Bowl up in New York, which would both be two pretty cool bowl games to go to. So I think you, you got to take it for what it's worth. You still got more recruits coming for Bielema, and I think you, you got to be satisfied after a, a seven or eight win season. Yeah. Tough, uh, tough way to end the home schedule, though. Lose to Michigan State, lose to Purdue, but Illinois is back at it next week in Ann Arbor looking for their eighth win. This is it from uh, 3 and Out. Thanks for watching.